Hello there Reason people, Boo Bear here and welcome to my channel. And today I'm going to be looking at configuring Reason to work with contacts. And no, you're not very mad, I have done a video like this in the past, um, but I've been asked some very specific questions, so I'm going to make sure I cover them in this video. If you don't have a Loopback MIDI installed on your PC, I recommend you go and have a look at my beginner's guide to the EMI and MIDI Loopback. If you happen to be using a Mac, I would recommend you go and have a little read up on the IAC bus uh, that's built into the Mac so you can set up your Loopback controllers there. So very, very quickly, what we've got set up at the moment on the screen, obviously we're going to have Reason, we're going to be talking back to our Loopback MIDI, I happen to use one called Loop MIDI, obviously then to contact. What I then do is I use another application called Jack where I configure all the outputs from contact to then come into Reason and that will then allow me to actually render and, well, print out whatever uh, sounds I'm, I'm creating in contact back into Reason. So I think the best thing we should do with this is actually stop this all together and just go to a brand new copy of Reason and a fresh copy of Contact and nothing set up in my loopback. So as you can see, all I've got open is now is my default template uh, in Reason, which is just my monitoring chain. There's nothing else really loaded. And I've also got myself a blank contact. And actually the first thing I'm actually gonna do is actually set myself up a MIDI port. Now obviously you can call this MIDI port anything you want, but for simple sakes, I am actually gonna call it contacts. As you can see, I've got loads of ports. And in this particular software with the Loop MIDI, just click on the plus, you scroll to the bottom, you actually see your new port created. So that's now set up and ready to go. And that is it, that is the MIDI Loopback set up. Um, it always makes me laugh when people say it's such a hard thing to set up Loop MIDI. Done. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is put ourselves an EMI and we're going to point ourselves at that MIDI port and it should be the, the last one in the list. And then we need to select a, a MIDI channel. If you're new to MIDI ports, basically uh, a port will have up to 16 channels inside it. And contact off the top of my head, I think um, supports up to four ports. So that would be a total of 16, 30, 64 instruments. So it supports 64 instruments. That's if your PC will uh, support that itself. So if we then come over to uh, contact, and obviously the, what we need to do is to come into the MIDI section and we need to find that MIDI port. It might be that I might have to restart contact Oh no, there it is, and it's already configured it, because I've got nothing else configured. It's automatically select, selected that port. So if it has selected that port, then all I need to do now really is just go and grab something, anything. Let's grab that, I do. Let's quickly get that loaded up. And we should be really be up in, up in the running. Uh, here we go, we should be up in running. So let's find out. Yes, there we go. So if we go and grab a, another instrument, uh, let's have a look, see what else we've got. Um, okay, we can go for a harp, I suppose. And whilst that's loading up there, I'm going to add myself a second EMI instrument. So Control D will duplicate that. So that's it. I'm going to put this onto MIDI channel number two. So I'm using the same port and I'm going to a different channel. If I want, I can set up another one and go back to channel one. So I can have two of these EMIs pointing at channel one if you want. And as you can see as default, um, which we need this button there, isn't it? That's on port A, channel one. This is port A, channel two. So again, here and select this one, that would be the piano again. So that's really the basics of the, the MIDI side of it, set up and done, you know. I can now start recording stuff in Reason and sign it to that EMI and, and that's it. So let's have a look at the audio side. So I use this application called Jack, which does all my 
audio routing and that's what it is it's just primarily a routing application um, obviously from the downloads it supports um, Linux you've obviously got the the Mac stuff and we've got Windows and obviously I installed the 64-bit jack version um, once you've downloaded it there is a, an FAQ on this site which is worth going through there's quite a few other videos out there which talk about jack and configuring it it's quite confusing in fact a lot of the videos I tried to look at when I very first started using this I gave up in the end because they, there's a number of applications which have been built up around Jack as well to make it easier to configure but I actually found it a lot more confusing with the applications they were all using so we're going to actually configure this quite raw so once you've actually got it installed on your system I highly recommend that you actually I've added on, onto my desktop I've added a couple of um, shortcuts to a couple of locations. I don't know where that one's opened up. Is it opened up? I'm not, no, there we go. It's here. So we've got the shortcuts to the shortcuts. And the reason that you need the, that is because this is how, when you, when you get it, you usually just get a port audio and that's it, just a basic one. Um, and in here, this is where we actually go in and we start configuring up our different cards. So as you can see, I've got an ISA for all. So that might be saying what everyone could be using. So you need to get that configured in to this um, onto the command line, really. So how do we find out what our audio ports are and what they're called? Well, under here we've got this thing called Jack Command. So when we run that, it brings up a command prompt, and that's actually inside the Jack directory. And then we're going to run this command here called Jack D minus D port audio, and that's a minus L there for list. So when I run that, it's going to go, go through and it's found all my audio devices which are on uh, this laptop I've got here. So I've got quite a few set up. And now I can obviously go come along here and go, okay, this is the audio device I want to use. And I can obviously just, oops, let's start on with that D. You want the whole line. So it's going to be direct sound. And then you go and paste that over here and as you can see there's my ISA for all so if I scroll down here there's my ISA for all including the V2 so you can see that's got a V2 in it as well so you get that configured up um, the other thing to do before you actually run it up is actually in the program directory of Jack itself there is a direct subdirectory called 64 bits and inside that there's an any file and um, in that any file default I think it was four it might even be two these ports are set to so you want to get these ports and set these to 32 input and 32 output ports um, and that's why I use my audio so I've got 32 if I wanted 48 obviously I put 48 and so on and so forth in there but I just stuck with 32 ports and I found that's that's been that's been good enough that has been good enough Obviously, I think the more you configure, there is meant to be more of an overhead. I, I must admit, I've got a 32 gig system here, so I, I don't really have memory issues. So we've now configured the port, so we've got ourselves our 32 bit ports. We've now set up a jack to actually use our sound um, card or device. And so it's just gonna be a simple case really of firing jack off. So, um, <laughs> jack off, sounds good. So I'm going to run it off. It's actually run it off into the, sorry another screen. So let me quickly pull that across. And this is how it looks when it's actually running. So it doesn't look much. <laughs> in fact, it might look like it's just hanging there. But it is. It's just a process there, which is sitting in the background, running away. So I'm just going to move that off the screen for the moment. So going back to the sh the other set of shortcuts I had. Oh, it's not them. It was the ones I just had up. Um, now we're up and running, there's one here called Jack Control. So when we fire it off, if it happens to be, say, stopped, click on Start or double check that that other daemon process, I, this process here, is still running. Because what this is doing, this is actually talking to that process. So if I now click on uh, Connect, this is where we can start doing our wiring. And at the moment, there's nothing to wire up. And the reason there's nothing to wire up because we haven't actually connected anything to Jack itself. So from uh, Reason itself, I'm going to go into Preferences. 
and so I'm just going to move another screen on my other screen out of the way and uh, under here you're going to see there's a, an ISA there for Jack Router so I can just select that and as soon as you select that you can see Reason is now popped up as one of the ports and again we're going to come over to contact go into the audio side we're going to choose ISA driver and we want a Jack Router as well and we're going to click on close. Um, Jack can be a bit flaky in the way it shows ports and that and contact can be a bit funny as well in the way it shows ports. Um, I'm going to just disconnect everything. So what that's done is I've just dewired absolutely everything here and the reason I'm going to do that is because what I want to do is I'm going to say reason itself I'm going to connect to the system because obviously I need to actually hear it going out with my speakers and then I'm going to connect contact and reason up together and let's see if this has made a mess of this or not so there we go so it has made a little bit of a mess of it um, there's a few ports which are missing off contact and I I tell you what it's going to be it's more likely the way they've configured it so what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to add a few extra ports here um, so that there's three and four so I'm going to just add three and four and then I'm going to add five and six So you can see I've now added up some extra ports, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I've got a feeling now, it, it, contact may have made them available. There they go, this, it's now made them available. So I'm just gonna disconnect that from the system. Disconnect, I'm gonna highlight these two again. So yeah, it's a little bit messy the way this sort of works. That's the main thing I wanted. As long as I've got like a one-to-one -one there, then I'm not gonna get too confused. Yeah, these have gone a little bit skew with. Um, and I think that's because obviously if I went into contact and created my 7, 8, 9, 10, I reckon it'll all line up a, a nice one-to-one. -one. But for some reason, I, I don't know if, if contact itself is like hold, held them ports in reserve um, because of the auxiliary ports. But anyway, we're getting a little bit lost there, so I'm just going to stop and come back into here. So what we're going to do now is we're going to set this first... Um, piano and I'm actually going to use the three and four so I'm going to route it out of ports three and four and I'm going to route this one out of five and six and the main reason I went that and I, I skipped one and two is because one and two happens to be a default and I know that can come through to uh, reason with my configuration not necessarily be your configuration but because of my configuration so now obviously if I come into reason and I'm playing my keyboards, well you can see audio's happening, audio's being sent out, but obviously there's no audio coming in. Well, you can see it's there, it's on port number three. And if I click on this one here, five and six. So what we need to do now is we just need to uh, add ourselves, well I'm going to add just a couple of audio tracks very, very quickly. And we're going to, I'm just going to configure these. Stereo, and I'm going to that one's going to be three and four. This is going to be a stereo input, and this is going to be five and six. Then, obviously, also, I need to do is highlight my EMI, and nothing happens. Hey, don't you love it when that happens? Okay, so what the reason we can't hear anything is we just got to enable it here. Yeah, it's one of them little mistakes. I always forget about that one. And then that should be the harp. So there we go. So that is actually Jack up and running. As I say, Jack can be flaky. You only have to sneeze on it and you sort of have to, you get used to this screen quite regularly. Um, there's under this little control thing, there is something called a patch bay. It doesn't work 100% well, but you can sort of pre-configure things on it. 
Um, as you can see, I have got like a contact sort of pre pre-configured on it and you can sort of click on activate. As I say, this is a bit flaky as well in its own right. Um, in fact, here, we've got this one here called Tigger. Now, Tigger happens to be, if you've watched any of my other videos, I have another PC sitting at the back of my room. That happens to be the name of that PC. So I can actually send audio across my network and this is how I'm, I'm doing it. Um, as I say, there's actually a, just a little network socket that when I run it, um, on my remote PC, it will actually connect across to this daemon session here, which I've got running on my, my desktop. And that in turn, just like the contact and the reason, this out port, TIG will appear down here with all the ports. And uh, yeah, I can configure that up as well. So it's very powerful as Jack in the way that you can really route things around, but at the same time, you only have to sort of sneeze on it sometimes and you're back to sort of square one. If you keep your routing, well, I'm not going to even say semi-basic, but if you try and keep the routing like one-to-one, -one, usually, I know contact there for some reason is missing the ports 7, 8, 9, and 10, but that's contact. Other things I've done, they've always been the one-to-one, -one, so when you collect them up, everything connects up nice and neatly. So that is really about it. So we've, we've covered the MIDI side and we've covered the audio side. Yep, a bit of a long video this one. Um, I hope that was enough details to try and get you up and running. As I say, check the uh, description and I'll make sure that all the links for the different stuff are actually in there. Well, thank you for watching and bye for now.